I've heard some stories about my grandpa, but mum always cuts them short. Recently I came across an article written about him. It sparked my interest in wanting to get to know a man who should have played a key role in my life. I've always wondered why he felt like a stranger. I do know one thing about him though. In 1941, when John was only 21 years old, he was taken by the Japanese and held captive for almost four years. That's a story I ought to know. Well, here are some photographs I will show you. Oh, okay. It all started in radio school, where my grandpa met his three best mates. That's Cliff Pearsall, mm -hmm. myself of course, mm -hmm. and Arthur Heenan. After training as radio officers, 22 men were approached to take part in an unspecified mission. Eventually, they were told they were going to be coast watchers on various atolls in the Gilbert Islands. So at the age of 19, my grandfather was split up from his mates and stationed on Buterritary. Well, the responsibility was uh, to report anything that moved in the air or on the sea. Um, what we were sent there for was uh, like human tripwires. If the Japanese did commence, they were going to come right down through the Gilbert and Ellis Islands to Fiji and eventually New Zealand and cut off American aid to Australia and New Zealand. That was their, that was the theory. And they would have too. So at my age, my grandpa was stationed here. And then the Japanese came. When they did, uh, we saw them coming and I uh, transmitted uh, a coded message. That day, my grandpa could have been killed. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I can't imagine how he must have feared for his life. They uh, asked me, was I the radio operator? I said, yes. They wanted to know why. I was a lieutenant. I thought, well, this is the end of the, the, the uh, journey. Along with his memories, these photos and drawings are the only things he has left to remind him of his imprisonment. He was beaten, tortured and starved, but most of all, he was robbed of his youth, something he would never get back. This is a picture of my mum and grandpa. She's always had a different opinion of why grandpa was so aloof. Now I realise he's never had the chance to explain to her. When I got out of prison camp after nearly four years and I went in when I was 21, got out when I was uh, 25, I insisted in my own mind that I was going to catch up. Um. I wanted to live those four years and I thought to myself, the best years of your life, you're missing. I try to catch up. I, I remember sort of sometimes I could sense a tension. I never ever associated it with you as a, as a young person being in prisoner of war camp for all those years, how that would have impacted on you, but it must have. I often felt that sometimes all this jolliness in the social life was to cover over um, a feeling of sadness. The prison camp had a, a, an effect that I realised that I was lucky in not being executed with a lot of others. And then, in 1944, an American came into the prison with news of Grandpa's friends. I said, oh, did you meet any of my Coast Watch friends? And he said, no, he said, I didn't, I didn't meet any Coast Watch men at all. But he said, there's a nice monument raised to uh, apparently Coast Watch people. He said, uh, there was uh, 22 names on the monument that our army erected in memory of them. And I said, good God, that's 
all my friends. And that was the first I realized that they had all been executed. I still emotional, I'm still emotional when I talk about it. And I often wonder, I often wonder how, why I'm still alive. I want to find out what happened to his friends and to help find any last traces of them. We are going to visit Peter Macquarie, an author who has information into where Grandpa's mates could have been buried. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah, come inside, I've got something here to show you. Ooh. Right, so you wouldn't have seen this map before, John. No, I have not. This is um, an intelligence map that the Americans made just prior to the 1943 landing. You know, where the, where the um, Coast Watchers were held, I've always thought it was in here somewhere. So now, you know, this guy Mark Noah that's found heads in one pit and bodies in another, that's right down here. And I would say yes, that's the area it was in. I felt a very strong need to help Grandpa find some kind of legitimate record, something set in stone, to recognise his best mates. At this point, I realise my grandfather's greatest heartache is not being imprisoned, but losing his best friends. I felt compassion for his grief, and I wanted to bring him closure. This is Tom, Tom Murray, T.C. Murray. Tom was a brave man to volunteer at the last minute, no doubt about that. He shouldn't really have been there. Very brave. Tom was one of the 22 Coast Watchers executed, but I still wanted to find what happened to Rex, Arthur and Cliff. In my research, I discovered a war memorial dedicated to the Coast Watchers. I hope we will find some trace and recognition of them, but more importantly, I hope Grandpa will find a sense of peace. Here's the plaque dedicated to the Coast Watchers. Here's my best friend here, Rex Hearn, and right under that, Arthur Heenan, and down here is the third, Cliff Pearsall. They were my best buddies. And they, along with all the rest there, were beheaded. It was uh, a shocking way to die. At least, uh, that's my opinion. Do you think you'll ever let it go? I'll never, ever let it go, I'm afraid. It's uh, still with me, and always will be. I get very emotional over it. I realise now, nothing will fully heal my grandpa. He is too good a friend to ever let go, or he just doesn't want to. Which in itself is the only way he can hold on to his friends.